to see got a text wanting to know if we were streaming to YouTube and it tells me that we are streaming to YouTube but uh, evidently uh, we are having some difficulty finding it uh, so if you know anybody who is trying to watch on YouTube I do not know if we're actually streaming there or not uh, everything on my end tells me that we are but when I try to find it I cannot find it on YouTube so uh, I will look one more time before we get started, but I do not uh, know what's going on with that. Okay, well, uh, if uh, you know anybody who's trying to watch on YouTube, tell them to go to the website. Uh, we're going to try to make the website experience better anyway. Look, working on some things for that, trying to make it work uh, better. So sorry about that if you're trying, uh, if, I mean, if you're not, if you're trying to watch on YouTube, you obviously can't hear me say that it's not working, can you? But hey, good to have you with us tonight. If you are there, hope you enjoyed that song. Jesus is your ticket to heaven. I picked that song out because it really is, uh, it, it really shows uh, what this class is really all about uh, when we're talking about that. When we're talking about Jesus being our ticket to heaven and uh, we're talking about no other gospel, all of that fits in really, really well uh, with the theme of what Paul is talking about in Galatians. Made some changes to the camera, uh, so I haven't really tested all of those. Uh, my picture is not as big as I wanted it to be, but that's okay. We'll work on that and get some of those things uh, squared away. Uh, just doing some things differently, and it's going to take us a little bit to get the bugs worked out of that. But uh, hopefully, uh, you got a Bible with you. We are going to be looking in the book of Galatians uh, tonight, and really looking forward to this part of the study. 
Uh, last week we did some, uh, you know, kind of some background things, and and tonight there'll be a little bit more of that background. We're actually going to cover quite a bit of text tonight. Uh, we're not going to read it word for word, but as we as we cover that. Uh, I just kind of want us to think through uh, the, the message that Paul is trying to get to the churches in Galatia as we start through that tonight. So uh, when we started uh, last week, there was a verse that, uh, that, that kind of stood out. And now remember, this is being written to the churches in, in Galatia. And, and this is what I think is going on uh, kind of uh, with, with history at the time Paul is getting, uh, at the time Paul is writing the book of Galatians. On this map, let me see if I can get a, a laser pointer here. So Paul has gone on this first uh, missionary journey, and he's he started here at Antioch, and he has gone down on this journey through Cyprus, back up, and he, he's preached in these cities, uh, uh, Antioch and uh, and these other cities as he's gone down to Derby and when he gets to Derby he turns around and he goes back so he's writing I think to these churches in the southern part of Galatia I, I know that there's this theory about him writing to churches in the northern part but I think with the way that the book of Acts is laid out the history that I see I think he is writing to these churches in the southern part of Galatia. And after Paul has gone and preached to them, there has been uh, some teachers who have come in and tried to introduce something uh, to go along with the gospel that Paul has preached. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through that tonight. So they're, they're introducing this stuff that, uh, that, that Paul is uh, kind of introducing something new to the gospel, which the gospel doesn't need anything new added to it. Okay, and that's a great lesson that, that you need to pick out of the book of Galatians. So Paul has gone back from Derby, Iconium, Lycra. He's gone back through Antioch and Pisidia. He's gone back, and now I think he's in over here in, in Antioch in Syria. So if you look at... The, the laser point, you have you have Antioch here in Syria, and then you have Antioch over here in Basidia. So, so don't get those two confused. I think now he is here in Antioch. While he is there, and he's there for quite a while, he's ministering to the church there, and, and during that time frame, there are some, some teachers who come in to these churches in Galatia. They are followers of, they are followers of the law of Moses. I, he calls them brothers, so I think I think they're Christians, but they're Christians who are still trying to follow the law of Moses, and they're teaching uh, evidently circumcision, that you need to be circumcised if you're going to be a Christian. And Paul, in the book of Galatians, is responding to that message. Now, I know we talked about this last week. I'm just trying to, re to remind you a little bit. The church takes up that question in Acts chapter 15. But I personally think that this letter is written before uh, the, the church meets in Acts chapter 15 to talk about this. So I think probably at this time you're, uh, well, look at my Bible real quick. I think you're probably in Acts chapter 11, uh, the last few chapters of Acts chapter 11, um, where it talks about uh, uh, uh that Paul is in uh, is in Antioch, the church in Antioch, the, the ending of Acts chapter 11. He, he goes to Jerusalem, and, and you see a lot of this history in, in Galatians chapter 2, and we're not going to go through that history uh, little by little unless you just want to do that. So if you do, you have to send me a message. I uh, really haven't planned on doing that tonight, uh, but can if you need to. So I didn't type hello in the chat boxes, so I am monitoring the chat boxes if you want to send a message. Uh, I will try to respond to that if I will uh, pay attention to it enough. It is still so strange that on uh, Facebook, when I type hello, it, it brings up a bunch of profile pictures. And if I'm not careful, I, I'm really not sure what I'm putting on there. Uh, not very excited about that, but I don't know how to fix it. So, so during the time frame after Acts chapter 11, then there is the conference in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 15 when they take up the question of circumcision. And again, I think Galatians is written before that. Um, and so Paul has, has gone on this missionary journey. He has preached to these churches. He has, he has formed these churches. He's gone back through those churches. He's appointed elders. And now there are some, some teachers uh, 
He calls them false brothers, which we'll look at in a moment. And they are going back into those churches teaching something that's different than the gospel that Paul has preached. So kind of the core verse that, that we're going to keep coming back to uh, time after time as we go through this study is this one from Paul. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. And as you look and, and we think through the book of Galatians, it, it doesn't matter what we add to the gospel. Anything that we add to the gospel is, is too much. So the, so the question is not what they added. I mean, in, in the book of Galatians, they obviously added uh, circumcision, the covenant of circumcision. They, we're going to find out later in the book of Galatians, maybe some special days, some feast days. But it's not, it's not what we add. If we add anything to the gospel, it is, it is too much. And it's just interesting where Paul says, if, if anybody preaches to you a message other than what I have preached to you, let, let it be anathema. So th there is no message other than the message that I have preached to you. Now, we're going to look at, uh, at the first, book, first part of the book of Galatians, and, and we're really, I mean, we're going to cover uh, a, a lot of territory. So if, if you have... Um, if you have a Bible, you just grab it, turn it to Galatians chapter 1. That's what I'm doing here. It's got an old, old-fashioned, got, you know, Bibles on the screen up here, all kind of stuff there, but sometimes just an old-fashioned Bible is what you need, right? Uh, we're going to cover Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, all the way through uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, there's a lot of material in there. But what I'm trying to do is not go through that verse by verse here. What I'm trying to help you do in, in this section of Galatians is understand a little bit about what Paul is trying to say. And, and please, tonight, tomorrow, uh, sometime this week, go back and, and read those sections so that you will see some of the things that, that Paul points out. I'm going to throw the, the Bible up on the screen so you'll be able to see that if you don't have one with you. But... Uh, We'll just kind of talk through that as we go as we go through. The content of Paul's gospel came by revelation. And that is the first thing that he is trying to say. He's trying to talk to you. I mean, he's trying to, to, to point out to them, to, to the recipients of this letter, that the gospel that he preached is, is not something that he received from men or he got from men. It was something that was given to him by God. So, I mean, even when he first starts the gospel, if you look on the screen here uh, and in uh, Galatians, well, sorry, wrong program, Galatians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle, not sent from men nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all of the brothers with me to the churches in Galatia. And then after those that verse that we just talked about here in verse 6, that they were deserting the gospel, I have no idea how I just uh, highlighted that, but I'm going to have to leave it highlighted because I don't know how to take it off right now. Um, in verse 8, but if, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. And as Paul works through that, this is kind of the core of, of the message in the verses that we are looking at tonight. Verse 11, 12. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. It, it didn't come from man. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but that, um, that creates a lot of thoughts here in, in my head. Uh, the question I start with is, is how did he get it by revelation from Jesus Christ? 
and I'm not really sure. I've, I've got an opinion, right? And and I'll share that with you. And, and when you look at, at at Paul's message and his and his life, and even the history that he gives in Galatians chapter one and chapter two, and and, and remember that that history is is uh, bound up in him trying to show that the message that he has does not depend on anyone else. It doesn't depend on the church in Jerusalem. It doesn't depend from uh, from somebody he set at their feet and got instruction about it. He, he didn't go to the apostles, uh, to the 12, to learn everything there was about Jesus. He learned it by revelation from Jesus Christ. And and his point in that is not that he can't learn anything about Christ. The point in that is that, that his message, the message that he preaches, and it's not his message, okay? It's God's message. But the message that he preaches stands by itself without anybody else needing to give confirmation to that message. And, and that's an extremely important point in Paul's letter. Now, when I use terminology sometimes, I don't, I don't explain my terminology with part of this. In, in trying to explain Paul's argument, I, you, you might hear me say Paul's gospel. Now, I don't mean by that that it's something that Paul made up. And I don't mean by that it's not the gospel that's centered in Jesus Christ, nor do I mean by that that it's anything different than, than the gospel that, that the 12 preached or, or anyone else preached. When I use that terminology, when we look at the, the, the book of Galatians, I'm using that terminology in context of, of Galatians 1 and 2, where Paul is trying to say, the thing that I preached came straight from God. I mean, nobody else taught it to me. I didn't receive it somewhere else. I didn't go take a, you know, I didn't go to the apostles and get the, you know, the, the cliff note version of the life of Jesus, right? Because I wasn't with him three years. He, he's talking about the content of the message that he preached to the Gentiles of salvation by grace and faith in Jesus Christ. So when, when I use that terminology, uh, don't make it mean more than that. It, it, it's a reflection of Paul saying, this is the message that I preach. So just for clarity, sometimes as, as I talk through Galatians, I will, I will say Paul's gospel, not, not at all meaning that it's different than the gospel of someone else. So, you know, kind of one of the questions that comes up for me is how would Paul have, have received this by, by revelation? Now, I want us to stop and think about something as we talk through that. We, we might think, that uh, that that is different, and I'm sorry that I'm doing this while we're on a live stream, but I am going to send uh, a message to somebody who, who sent me a message. Uh, they're trying to find it on YouTube, and I can't uh, I can't find it either. Although it tells me it is broadcasting there. Um, Sorry to have to do that uh, while I'm streaming, but I don't I don't have an assistant to do that for me. Um, and uh, just tell him to try the website. If you can't ever find it anywhere else, the website is always the second be the, the best place to go to try to find the live stream if you can't find it on one of the other platforms. Uh, so, so think about the 12. So, Because sometimes it, when we think about understanding by revelation and being taught by revelation, we, we think, okay, the, the 12 traveled with Jesus for three years. So obviously, you know, two, two, two and a half, three, uh, I think it's closer to three. So while they traveled with Jesus, Jesus taught them the things that then they went out and preached to the world after Jesus' death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension up to heaven. And that is, that is very true. But in fairness to Paul, and in fairness to the Twelve, they misunderstood a great deal of what they were taught. That They didn't always understand the message that Jesus was trying to preach to them or trying to instruct them in. And, and it seems as if the defining moment for them to move past not understanding well to becoming 
incredible ministers and teachers of the message of Jesus, it seems to me that the defining moment for that was Acts chapter 2, when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so I, I think in a lot of ways what Paul is saying here is, is a reflection of what happened in Acts chapter 2. By the gift of the Holy Spirit through revelation, they became great teachers because they didn't always understand what Jesus was trying to teach them. I mean, if you look back through the Gospels, there are so many times they misunderstood. And then you start thinking about Paul and you say, well, when did Paul get that revelation? I mean, when did he find out when, when, did, when did God reveal that to him? Um, and, and that's a really good question that I, I'm, not in, in, I'm not totally sure of. I want you to look over in Acts chapter, uh, in Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, verse 12. And this kind of, it goes along with, with the history that Paul has there in Galatians chapter 1 and 2. So after Paul has this experience with Jesus on the road, and Ananias came to see him, and, and, and you know he says in, in Galatia, in a, I'm sorry, Acts 22, Ananias is a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very moment, I was able to see him. And so then he speaks to Paul and he says, uh, and now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. And when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking. Quick, he said to me, leave Jerusalem immediately because they will not accept your testimony about me. And, he, and Lord, I replied, these men know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. And the Lord said to me, go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So we know that there were experiences that Paul had just like this one in the temple, which is right after his conversion, where God is giving him a message. And, and, and Paul didn't immediately start preaching uh, did he because, I mean, he, he went to the temple and, and God instructed him to leave Jerusalem and that he was going to send him far away to be the teacher of the Gentiles. And when you jump back to Galatians uh, chapter 1, which, which we've done on the screen here, he talks about what happened. He, you know, he said, uh, you know, after God called him and set him apart, he said, I did not consult any man, nor did I go to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went to immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter. So you, you have this instance where, where Paul is away and he comes actually in Acts chapter 11 because Barnabas goes to get him from Tarsus and brings him to Antioch so he can minister to the church there as Paul is preaching to the Gentiles. Now, there's another verse that, that I think is also very interesting that, that ties in uh, into this in, a lot of, in, in some ways. And it, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, if I could type better, we would already be there. And, and you know this verse. It, it's, it's where Paul, uh, oh, I typed the wrong verse. Uh, it's where Paul is talking about, uh, I, I think he's talking about himself, honestly. And he says in verse 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was called up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was called up to paradise and he heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. Now, the 14 years ago, I mean, if you look at the book of, of 2 Corinthians and you think, okay, maybe, and, and I do think 2 Corinthians is probably written about 56 AD, then 14 years before that would have been, you know, 43, 42, 43, 44 AD, somewhere in that time frame. And you read about other visions that Paul had in the text, but none of them really fit that 
text. None of them really fit that time frame. You have the one who was, when he was on the road to Damascus, you know, when, when Jesus first appeared to him. Well, that one would have been too early. You know, that one was probably actually around, um, uh, probably, uh, Uh, probably around AD 33. I was trying to get all of those dates in my head. So that one's probably around AD 33. So that one's too, that one's too early. You have the one in Galatians in chapter two, where he says, according to revelation, he was supposed to go up to Jerusalem. Well, that one is, uh, it, it's the one in Acts 11 verse 30, I think. And it's, it's too late. It's somewhere around AD 46. So then you have, uh, you have Paul's encounter with Jesus. We talked about that one. It can't be that one. That one's too early. And you have uh, a vision when he is in Antioch. Maybe in Acts chapter 11, there's a word there that, that implies that, that maybe he had a vision. But, but if he did, that one would be too late because that's probably 45 or 46 uh, A.D. You have his vision of the man of Macedonia that he saw, but, but that one's too late. Uh, so it wouldn't have been that one. You have uh, the trance that we just read about where he's in Jerusalem, and that one would have been too late. Uh, what I'm getting to with all of that is, is this vision, if this is Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we don't have record of that vision anywhere else except, uh, except just this text. Maybe it was instances like that where Paul understood this message by revelation. And, and again, it's not, Im, it's not that it's so important to nail down the time frame that we're talking about. The, the important part is the message that Paul is preaching, he did not receive that from somebody else. That is a message that came from God. This message to go preach the gospel to the Gentiles is this message that it was his mission from God from the very beginning. I mean, that passage we read in Acts chapter 11 when he fell into the trance in the temple, at, at that moment, God was setting him apart to be a minister, to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And as he goes through this history in Galatians chapter 1 and Galatians chapter 2, that's what he's going to be showing you. The, the message I received, I didn't learn it from anybody else, when I did go up to Jerusalem and I met with the apostles, with the leaders of the church, those who, who uh, were in authority, those who are respected, uh, those who, uh, who are leaders of the church, they gave my ministry its, its blessing. And so, so they weren't in conflict with one another. What, what has happened is these, he calls them false teachers. We'll look at that again in just a minute about what he meant by that. So, there's a couple of messages I think that we need as a church to learn from that. Um, the message that we preach is not, um, it's not man's message. The gospel, the gospel has not changed. Our gospel is not a teaching of man. And when I say our gospel, it's like when I use the term Paul's gospel. Our gospel, what we preach, is not, it's, it's not a, a philosophy. It's not another, it's, it's not a political stance. It's uh, that the origin of the gospel is divine and the authority of the gospel is divine. You know, and, and the gospel doesn't need uh, society's confirmation. Society doesn't have to say the gospel is true. The gospel is true whether society accepts it or not. If, if the world rejects the gospel, the gospel is still the gospel. And, and so my responsibility, your responsibility, is, is to proclaim that gospel, but it doesn't depend on the world's permission. If, if the world stands up and says, we don't want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's still our responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if they accept it or, or reject it, our mission is to share it. And, and Paul, as he's talking about the gospel that he has preached to the churches, he, that gospel is, is God's gospel. It is of divine authority. It is divine origin. It is God's message to the world. And, and we need to take, uh, I think we just need to take note of that, that, that this is not 
This is not my message. This is God's message to the world. Now, now I know, you know, we have theologians, we have preachers, we have we have people who who debate the Bible. We don't always agree on everything. We have differences of opinion. We have differences of thought. Uh, we've written books of, uh, I mean, book upon book upon book, right? I mean, I know in, in John, John says that, you know, if you wrote down everything that Jesus did, that the world wouldn't hold the books. I mean, just think about how many theological books have been written uh, just in, in, in my lifetime and, and volumes and volumes of books, right? So we, we, we keep studying and, and studying it. And, and it, in that respect, Yes, you know, I, I learned some things that were taught by man, some insight to the Bible, listening to some great scholars, listening, reading to, to great men and women who have read about the text. But the core of the gospel, and, and remember for Paul, we, we looked at this last week, if you want to go back and read this in, in, uh, in Acts, the, the core of Paul's message was forgiveness of sin comes through Jesus Christ, through the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That is the core of the gospel, and that is the message of God to the world. So the message that we share, just like the message Paul shared, is a divine message. It, it, its origin and its authority comes from the God who created the world. So, so the first part of Paul's, you know, the, the first point that he wants to make, and, and they're not really in order. They're kind of mixed through this section of history that, that we're looking at in the text here in, in Galatians chapter 1 and Galatians chapter 2. But the, the first point, the first thing that Paul is trying to say is, look, if, if somebody came in and is preaching you a message differently than the message that I preached, and they're telling you that, that Paul is not really preaching the right message. The message that I preached came from God. I received it by revelation, not that anybody taught it to me. There's not anything that needs to be added to it. Now, there's another part that, that Paul talks about as he goes through Galatians chapter 1 and 2, and that, and that is just simply this. The, the mindset that the false teachers had that, that held on to uh, that, that held on to Judaism so tight, Paul was part of that mindset. That's not a mindset that is foreign to Paul. That is a mindset that, that Paul was absolutely passionate about at one point in his, in, in his life, right? I mean, he was persecuting the church of God because of his zeal for Judaism. You know, if anybody wanted to, if you want to talk about anybody keeping the law, uh, Paul kept the law. He was... Uh, you know, when he goes through and he says, I was a, a Jew of, of Jew, and I was, you know, I, I was zealous. And even in Galatians, as he writes this, if we go back to the text uh, really quick, uh, in verse 14 here, he says, I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. When we read in Acts, when they, they laid their, you know, he guarded the coats of the men who stoned Stephen, the, the martyr. And if you want to talk about somebody who was passionate about Old Testament law, Paul was passionate about Old Testament law. So he's not, he's not an outsider to this Jewish community, uh, these men who are trying to teach uh, this different gospel. Now, he says, that it's kind of an interesting phrase, he says they are, they are false teachers who have, who have slipped in among them, uh, secretly slipped in. You know, I, we might look at a text comparison of that. I don't think you can can see this on your screen, but I, I'll read it to you. When you uh, I'll read I'm sorry, I just lost the uh, lost the verse that I was looking at. Uh, happens sometimes when you got that many screens going on. But he calls them false teachers, teachers that have secretly slipped in among them. They, they, you know, they, they kind of, uh, it, it's Galatians chapter 2, verse 4, if you're looking for it. Let me pull that up real quick. Well, it helps if you can type the right, uh, the right numbers. All right, so he says that they were uh, false brethren, quietly brought in. Uh, th these are different translations of the phrase. Uh, false brothers secretly brought in, 
uh, false brothers smuggled in. I mean, you got to really like that. Well, that's the Holman Christian Standard Bible. They smuggled these Christian brothers in to do this. Uh, false brethren unaware brought in, uh, infiltrated by spies pretending to be Christians. I mean, that's the message. Uh, false brethren secretly brought in some false believers who had infiltrated our ranks, uh, false brothers who had infiltrated our ranks, uh, false brethren secret. I mean, you get the idea, right? Th these people had slipped in uh, among the church to, to speak of this doctrine of saying circumcision is needed to be added and, and, and keeping of certain days, as we'll look at in later in Galatians, it is needed in essence for someone to be a Christian. So what they were doing is you have the message of Jesus and then we're going to add this other stuff to it. And Paul is drawing a line there and saying, that is not the gospel that I preach. There's freedom in Jesus. So he's passionate about those traditions. He knows about those traditions. Uh, Charles Moffat says no Wednesday night class. So uh, obviously it is not streaming on YouTube. Um, sorry, I have to keep doing this, but I keep... Uh, All right, so let me check the website. Let me look real, really quickly to make sure this is streaming. Uh, I know it's streaming to Facebook. I'm pretty sure it's streaming to the, to the website. Yes, we are definitely streaming to the website. So, so there, uh, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. So I, I can't control some of that stuff that's sending them a feed, whatever they do with it. Uh, sometimes I can't, uh, I can't control. Uh, that's why the website is always the best place, the, the best place uh, to go. All right, so uh, kind of lost my point in all of that, but we'll get uh, we'll get back to it. You know, in in, in Philippians uh, to the to the church in Philippi, he talks about the same thing. You know, those of the circumcision who uh, they put confidence in the flesh. And, and, and Paul says, you know what, I, I put such confidence in the flesh. If anyone thinks he has reason, I mean, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm a people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law, a Pharisee for zeal, persecuting the church for legalistic reasons, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. So, so here's kind of the lesson, I think, in understanding of, of where Paul is coming from. And, and he was very zealous for that way of life that now he is opposing and saying that is not to be added to the gospel of Jesus. Uh, the, the gospel will always have antagonists. You know, in, in this case, we looked at it and they said they were false brothers that were brought under false pretenses. The gospel always had, fr from the very beginning, from the days of Jesus, from the days of the early church, all through history, the, the church, the gospel, has always had antagonists, and it will always have people who oppose it. It is, it is the dynamic nature of the struggle between flesh and spirit. It is it's the, the nature of the struggle between good and evil. It is a Jesus who chooses to save and a Satan who, who tries to destroy. And there will always be false teachers. There will always be those who oppose the message. There will always be those who try to add something to the message. And what I would encourage us to do, go back to the core of the message, the death, the burial, the resurrection, forgiveness, grace through the name of Jesus Christ. And so as Paul dealt with this in Galatians, churches today will, will deal with the same thing. We will have those who will say uh, that there's not a reason to preach the gospel or, or the gospel is not true or Jesus didn't really exist. I mean, always going to be antagonist to that, but hold on to the divine inspiration of the message. Now, now here's the other thing that, that Paul is trying to show. Okay, we're right out of time. The other thing that Paul is trying to show is the church in Jerusalem, the, those who the Judaizers might, might turn to, uh, and and as we say that, quick aside, it is not just Judaizers who are at the core here. Okay, they were trying to add circumcision, the keeping of the Old Testament law. Anything that you add to the gospel, remember it is not what you add to the gospel, it is that you add anything 
to the gospel. But as he, he continues on this message, he said, okay, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem and got acquainted with Peter, stayed with him 15 days, didn't see any of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. You know, what I'm writing you is no lie. He went to Syria and Cilicia. He's personally unknown to the churches of Christ that are in, Ju in Judea. They only hear the report that he is preaching the message. So in, in chapter 2, uh, 14 years later, I went... Uh, 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas, and I took Titus along with me in response to a revelation, and I think that was the revelation about the, the famine that was coming and the, the help that they sent to Jerusalem, and, and set before them the gospel that I preach among the Gentiles, but I did it privately to those who seem to be leaders. Now, we have to be careful that we don't make too much out of this verse. He... Uh, it's a little further down. For fear that I had run or had run my race in vain, yet not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. The matter arose because some false brothers infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. As for those who seem to be important, Whatever they were makes no difference to me. God does not judge by external appearance. Those men added nothing to my message. He is not saying that in a way to, uh, to diminish in, in, in any way how important the apostles are. He is saying that in a way to show they didn't add anything to my message. It's not that I went to Jerusalem and they, they instructed me in something that I didn't already know. On the contrary, it's okay, they didn't instruct me. They didn't add anything to it. On the contrary, they... On the contrary, they saw that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as Peter had been to the Jews. For God, who was at work in the ministry of Peter as an apostle to the Jews, was also at work in my ministry as an apostle to the Gentiles. And James, Peter, and John, those reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace that was given to me, and they agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews, all that we, they ask is that we should continue to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. So if you're reading Galatians chapter 1 and Galatians 2 and you, you start to develop this idea that there is some kind of, of struggle between the church in Jerusalem and Paul's message, not there. The, the leaders were in agreement. Now, they did. They sent, they sent men down to Antioch to see what was going on, which... Obviously, they should have done. They're overseeing the church. They're, they're seeing the teaching that is going on. And, and even when it talks about Paul opposing Peter, and you see that in, in big text right here, you know, you know, when Peter came to Antioch, I, I opposed him face to face. And we, you know, we, we think about Peter and, and Paul standing, you know, kind of nose to nose, face to face, having this discussion about eating with the Gentiles when, when there are Jewish people who are present. The point, I think, again, that Paul was trying to make there is, you know what, the message that I was given by Revelation, that message is greater than than the opinion or the actions of one man, even, even if that person is one of the 12. You know, e even Peter himself, I know the message that God gave me to preach. I know that there is no favoritism in God. The message of Jesus Christ is for Jew and Gentile, and, and Gentile are not required to be Jewish to become believers in Jesus. And, and, and again, please don't fixate on that one issue because the issue is much greater than just uh, following the law or circumcision. It is adding anything to the gospel. And, and we'll talk about that as we go through the text and, and go deeper into it. It's kind of still an introduction kind of phase. The lesson here, and I think there is a lesson and I think the lesson is um, the church must work together to, to, solve, to solve growth problems. I mean, what you see here is you see Peter working in conjunction with Paul. You see Paul working in conjunction with Peter, James. You, you see the right hand of fellowship being given to those. They're, okay, they're, they're two distinct group of people at, at the beginning of the church that we're preaching to. We have those who are preaching to the Jewish audience, those who are preaching to the Gentile audience, but we are going to work together as we do that. And, and if the church is going to address growth problems, where it's whether it's first century church or 21st century church, right? The, the church 
has to work together. And, and by church, I, I want to ask you to think about it in two ways. One is, is a local congregation, you know, what we would consider our church, you know, or your church or my church. And I know when we use that terminology, it's kind of like using the terminology of Paul's message, right? We know it's not our church. We know it's God's church, but it's the one that we attend. A church, a congregation, a group of people must work together. And the church universal must work together. We, we must all work together. So if, if we have differences in culture, we must all work together. If we have differences about things in different parts of the country, we must all work together. The church, just like the church that we see in Galatians, and, and it didn't mean it was without uh, difficulty sometimes, did it? I mean, it wasn't ideal, I don't think, for Paul and Peter to have that kind of confrontation, but that kind of confrontation at that moment was necessary. But as, as you look at that, you know, even if we disagree, we need to learn how to work together even in, in disagreement. You know, he, he says Peter was wrong in what he did, and we know Peter was wrong, right? And it, I know Peter baptized Cornelius, I, you know, great man of church, but in that particular instance, he had just made an incorrect decision. So the church has to work together to solve those growth problems. And the other one, uh, I didn't mean for this class to go on that long, but the, the, the other one is, you know, and, and this is the point of Paul's message in Galatians. The gospel is for everyone. God does not show favoritism. God doesn't recognize, uh, you know, it, salvation is not restricted to people of a particular race. It's not restricted to people of a particular color. It's not restricted to people of a certain educational level or a, a certain uh, economic status. There is no favoritism with God. The message of Jesus Christ is for everyone who lives, breathes, everyone who exists in this world. I mean, Peter knows that. He knows from, from Acts chapter 10 when, he, when the Spirit comes upon Cornelius in his household, Peter says, I know that God does not show favoritism. And that is a message for us. God does not show favoritism. You see that in Paul's message in Romans, you know, salvation for the Jew first, then the Gentile, punishment for the Jew first, then for the Gentile if they, they choose to dishonor God. And, and there is a message for us in that we should not show favoritism. The gospel is for everyone. And that gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, the message of, of forgiveness of sin, things that you couldn't be justified from by the law of Moses. We're going to see this next week as we look through the, the next part of, of chapter two. Things that you could not be justified from the law of Moses. You are justified in Christ. You are justified in Christ, not from circumcision, not from keeping a special day, not from a, 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 a special event. You are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Christ. And there is, there is no other place to turn for salvation. And as you look into the world, that message is for everyone in our world. So there is no other message other than the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world. And, and we hold on to that gospel and we add, we add nothing to that gospel. There is nothing that needed to be added and nothing that we can add, just share the message of God with the world. And as Paul goes through the first part of Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2, what he is trying to show as he goes through who sent him and that he wasn't sent by man, that he wasn't taught by man, that he didn't go up to the apostles to get, to get the approval, what he is trying to show there is that, that the message that he is preaching to the Gentiles is God's message to the Gentiles. And if anybody comes and preaches a message other than the one that he preached, other than the one that they received, let him be cursed because they have changed the gospel. And, and if you turn to a different gospel, Paul says, it's not even, it's not even a gospel. It's not even a gospel. So a couple of lessons there. No gospels for everyone. Uh, the message that we share is a divine message. It, it doesn't need 
human approval. It, it, it always has the approval of God, who, who is the one who gave the message. And, and that hasn't changed, and it never will, will change. So I hope you learned something tonight. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. We'll kind of get a lot of history in, in that tonight, but we'll kind of get more in depth in the text next week. Uh, we'll actually uh, next week be looking at uh, Galatians chapter 2, verses uh, 15 through the end of the chapter in verse 21. So it's it's a section about being justified by faith. And it's a core section for us to understand the book of Galatians. If uh, you talk to somebody who is trying to watch on YouTube, I have no idea what is going on there. It is sending a feed to YouTube. I can see it right here, but it doesn't look like it is going into, uh, for, for some reason, it's it's not going through through the YouTube servers or something. I have, have no idea. Uh, we'll try to work on that and get that uh, squared away before Sunday and next Wednesday night. So Sunday morning, uh, join us for Bible class, uh, 9 o'clock, one of those websites, hopefully still the... Uh, hopefully still the YouTube channel. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, but you can be on Facebook, uh, one of the two websites. Uh, you can be Clarksville Highway Church or GospelChariot.Church. Those seem to work best. I know a lot of people like to watch it on YouTube because they can put it on the television. But uh, again, don't not, it's sending. The, it, it, it's sending. I just don't know what where it's going. Don't know what's happening. I can't, uh, can't solve YouTube problems. Uh, so, uh, hey, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for joining in. Thanks for being here tonight. Hope you learned something. Uh, don't see any questions anywhere, so I can't answer those. Let me type hello to a uh, couple of people who are watching there. Send a couple of messages. And uh, hope you have a great evening. I didn't really mean for the class to go 50 minutes, but it did. So sorry about that. I'll try to do better next time. And uh, look forward to seeing you uh Seeing you soon, whether I see you in person on Sunday or whether you are on the live stream and uh, I can't see you, but you can see me, but I know you'll be out there. So have a good evening.